Welcome to another Big Train Tour at the Colorado Railroad Museum. This month, we'll be taking a look at an 1880s vintage passenger car that arrived in Golden even before the Colorado Railroad Museum did. Today, Rio Grande Southern Business Car Rico is proudly displayed at the museum with a rich history to share. I'm Paul Hammond, Executive Director of the Colorado Railroad Museum. Our subject railroad business car was originally built for the Denver and Rio Grande as a railway postal car, but ended up spending most of its service life on southwestern Colorado's famed Rio Grande Southern Railroad. Come join me now as we take a look at the history of this Colorado classic and how it was remodeled and renamed over the years and eventually relocated to Golden. Our subject railroad car offers a look into the versatility of wood car building. Virtually all freight and passenger cars were constructed of wood in the 19th century, which in turn meant that any well-equipped railroad shop could readily repair and remodel cars and also build new ones from scratch. The Rico would demonstrate the ease of working with wood repeatedly during its service life. In 1882, the Denver and Rio Grande's Burnham Shops in Denver turned out eight identical cars built for carrying the United States mail. The cars are believed to have been constructed from kits furnished by the Pennsylvania-based railroad car builder Bill Meyer and Small. These kits would have contained all of the necessary metal parts for the cars, as well as a number of specialty wooden parts. As a postal car, equipped for sorting the U.S. mail en route, our subject was originally numbered 17. It likely operated on the circuitous route running from Denver to the mining boom town of Leadville. On this route, the train would have headed south from Denver to Pueblo, then west through Canyon City and the Royal Gorge to Salida, then north to Leadville. Mail car number 17 was renumbered to mail car number 4 in 1885 or 1886. Just a couple years later came the car's first major change. With the Rio Grande promoting excursions throughout its vast narrow gauge system in the late 1880s, the little mail car in 1888 was converted into an excursion car numbered 569. For the next two years, the car carried private sightseeing, hunting, and fishing groups throughout the Rocky Mountains. Famed photographer William Henry Jackson even took advantage of a special excursion train as he roamed the Denver and Rio Grande exposing glass plate negatives during the 1880s, although car 569 was not part of his consist. By 1890, the Denver and Rio Grande was converting large sections of its main Colorado routes, including affiliated Rio Grande Western lines in Utah, to standard gauge. Large amounts of narrow gauge rolling stock became surplus as a result. Excursion car 569 was no longer needed by the Denver and Rio Grande, and it was sold along with a host of other cars. The purchaser was the new Rio Grande Southern, brainchild of Otto Mears, also known as the Pathfinder of the San Juans. This line was under construction via circuitous route through the San Juan Mountains between Durango and Ridgeway. Car 569 was converted into company service, becoming Rio Grande Southern Construction Diner No. C3. Along with at least 10 other second-hand cars, Diner C3 would be used by construction crews for the next two years as the railroad forged ahead to complete its challenging and spectacular route. By 1892, as the former mail and excursion car was marking its 10th year of existence, the Rio Grande Southern's line was fully operational and traffic was booming. A construction diner was no longer needed and management had other ideas anyway. Diner number C3 was sent to Denver where woodworkers in the Denver and Rio Grande's Burnham shops converted it into a business car for the railroad's superintendent. In this pre-automobile age, railroad executives needed to travel along their railroad to conduct business and inspect facilities. A purpose-built car such as Rico served rather like a traveling mobile headquarters, comparable perhaps to a stylish recreational vehicle today. A desk provided office space. Meals were prepared and served on board, and of course, overnight accommodations were provided for those traveling along with the superintendent. 
The car was officially completed on July 31st, 1892, and named Rico, which is Spanish for rich, and also the name of one of the mining boom towns along the railroad's route. In its new configuration, the car now featured four Pullman sections with daytime seating that converted to nighttime sleeping accommodations. An observation room at the rear and a kitchen at the forward end completed the setup. The car had an overnight capacity of nine, including a staff member who served as both cook and porter. Painted in a rich maroon color, the Rico was memorialized in a series of well-known photographs taken in early 1893 by William Henry Jackson. For the trip, Jackson was again provided with his own special train, this time a locomotive and two business cars. One of these was Rico. The other, business car K from the Denver and Rio Grande, was later renumbered B8 and is also preserved today at the Colorado Railroad Museum. Perhaps most famously, the train posed in view of Lizard Head Peak, a prominent landmark between Rico and Telluride. Sadly, and certainly ironically, the nationwide panic of 1893 struck less than two years after the Rio Grande Southern's completion. In fall of that year, the Sherman Silver Purchase Act was repealed. The act, which specified U.S. government purchases of silver, had been signed into law as the Rio Grande Southern was just starting construction. Unfortunately, the act had led to nationwide inflation and business failures, leading to its repeal in late 1893. As a result, the Rio Grande Southern, which had been built specifically to serve newly discovered silver mining regions, found itself in immediate financial trouble. The courts appointed the Denver and Rio Grande as receiver of the Rio Grande Southern, and founder Otto Mears lost control of the railroad forever, along with a good deal of his personal fortune. Luckily for business car Rico, the superintendent still needed to travel during these challenging years. Photographer Jackson would return in 1895 for another round of photography. And for a remarkable 17-year period, the Rico would function largely unchanged as the business car for the line's superintendent. In 1909, the Rico returned to the Burnham shops in Denver once more. There, it was overhauled and renamed yet again, this time to Montezuma. Once it returned to southwestern Colorado, the railroad's superintendent used the car during annual fishing trips, with a series of images being recorded on film. In 1913, the name Montezuma was dropped, with the straightforward number E21 instead being applied. The B designation stood for business in the Denver and Rio Grande numbering system. For the next three or four years, car B21 would continue to support the needs of the railroad's executives. But as the United States prepared to enter World War I, the car faced its next career change. In 1917, car B-21 was demoted to outfit service, hearkening back to its first years of working for the Rio Grande Southern. Outfit cars serve as a home away from home when railroad outfits, otherwise known as construction, maintenance, and repair teams, need to travel out into the field. On a remote railroad like the Rio Grande Southern, there were plenty of outfit jobs required to keep tracks cleared and in repair, bridges and buildings properly maintained, and telegraph lines constantly restrung to enable communications along the line. Renumbered simply 021 for these duties, the car was painted into a utilitarian mineral or boxcar red color. The one noteworthy recorded event early in this new service was a derailment when in 1920 car 021 overturned at Millwood. It was repaired at the Rio Grande's Alamosa shops and soon returned to outfit train duty. The car would see work train service pretty much continuously until the Rio Grande Southern's demise in the early 1950s. From 1936 to 1948, number 021 was based out of Durango. It would head out of town when a construction or repair project was getting started, remain out in the field during the project, then return once again to Durango where it would await the next call. Not unexpectedly, there are very few known images recorded of the car during this time frame. The Rio Grande Southern's challenging terrain, heavy winter snows, and sudden summer rainstorms, along with the line's many bridges and trestles, were a constant battle for the struggling railroad. These kept work crews constantly busy right up to the line's abandonment in 1951-1952. 
Outfit car 021 lasted in service until this time, but now an uncertain future awaited. This time around, it was unlikely that another narrow gauge railroad would be interested in purchasing the car. As the line was in the process of being scrapped, with crews removing the rails and other metal hardware for salvage, fate intervened. An interested buyer had come forward for the car. The Rocky Mountain Railroad Club was founded in 1938 with a goal of promoting public interest in railroads. The club's members, hailing from many states and even several foreign countries, came together to charter special excursion trains and occasionally to purchase selected Colorado Railroad locomotives and cars for preservation. Knowing of the car's earlier history as a business car, the club was especially interested in the 021. Since the railroad was being abandoned, the Rio Grande Southern's asking price for outfit car 021 was quite reasonable. The bigger challenge was moving the car and finding a home, even if only temporary. It ended up being moved from Durango to a short section of track in Golden, Colorado for storage. Located near today's Lions Park, the car would remain there for the next six years. In 1958, Colorado Railroad Museum founder Bob Richardson purchased a parcel of land some two miles east of Golden. He was planning to relocate the locomotives and cars he had collected at his narrow gauge motel and museum in Alamosa. This would become today's Colorado Railroad Museum, opening to the public the very next year, in 1959. The Rocky Mountain Railroad Club had collected other historic rail rolling stock in the meantime, including Rio Grande Southern 460 Steam Locomotive No. 20, along with Caboose No. 0404 from the same railroad. The club worked with Richardson, and soon its collection moved to the new museum site in Golden. Outfit Car 021, formerly Business Car Rico, was an early arrival in 1958. Club members soon began work to return the car to its earlier appearance as Rico. By 1969, it was being pulled on occasion behind Denver and Rio Grande Western No. 346. This 1881 vintage steam locomotive had itself been returned to operation by the museum just a few years earlier. In 1974, the Rico appeared in a television special called The Great American Train Story, featuring Johnny Cash. Filmed on location at the museum, the car's starring role was a reminder of the glamour days of some 80 years earlier, when Rico hosted famed photographer William Henry Jackson during his photographic tour of the Rio Grande Southern. Rico has occupied a variety of locations around the museum over the years, with one of the most iconic pairing it behind Rio Grande Southern 10-wheeler locomotive No. 20. It was given fresh coats of paint every few years and remained a favorite of guests. The car was eventually presented to the Colorado Railroad Museum and the Rico's care continues. In 2011 and 2012, the car received a thorough refurbishing, emerging from the museum's roundhouse, complete with detailed striping and lettering. In the years since, the Rico has served as a stationary hot cocoa and cookies car during the museum's annual Polar Express train ride event. In 2019, it was again taken into the shop and repainted. Today, it remains a favorite of guests who peer in through the end platform windows seeking a glimpse of the car's 1890s glamour. Rich in both history and name, the Rico is truly a Colorado Railroad icon. Thanks for joining me today. This symbol of Colorado railroading, business car Rico, is a lucky survivor that was continuously rebuilt and reinvented during its service life. Over the course of its long and varied career, it served a broad cross-section of railroaders, from diverse construction workers to postal employees to railroad executives. I hope you've enjoyed learning about this unique railroad passenger car today, and I also hope that your appreciation for Colorado's rich railroad heritage continues to grow with each and every tour of the museum's collections. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Commenting and sharing in particular may qualify as virtual engagements for important funding programs like the SCFD.